Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today became internet famous earlier this year when her incredible floor routine at the 2019 Collegiate Challenge received a perfect 10 and went viral. UCLA gymnast Caitlin Ohashi is here. I am so excited to talk to you today because first of all, I love gymnastics. That floor routine, I was obsessed with it. It has 35 million views right now. Where were you and how did you first find out that it had gone viral? Oh my gosh, I was ice skating. Ice skating? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so my phone, like my Twitter notifications kept going off and I was like, what is happening? I was like, these aren't typically on ever. And then I realized when I got home, I had jumped like 50,000 followers. Oh gosh. And I was like, oh, something's happening. And like people were screenshotting, like celebrities like tweeting yeah. the routine and they're like, what the heck? Yeah, so Didn't it was you crazy. Did you have a feeling it would go viral? Um, so my last year routine went viral too. And so it was kind of like, okay, we wanted to one up that one and whatever happened happened. So it was mm -hmm. kind of in the back of our minds, but it wasn't something like we knew when it was going to go viral, if it was going to go viral, but we just knew we wanted it to have more intricate dance and be like as joyful as possible. It definitely was joyful. Um, you said this, a lot of celebrities are screenshotting and, and sending it to you. Which was your favorite celebrity? That's really hard. There were so many amazing ones. Like uh -huh. Janet Jackson, of course, was crazy. Yeah. Uh, Gabrielle Union. I loved that um, John Ralphio from <laughs> Parks and Rec. Okay. He tweeted something and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like I love Parks and Rec. So that made you the most excited. Yeah. The routine that you had itself, it was so cool. Who came up with the idea? Was it you and your coach? Um, yeah, so we kind of, it was like, it was a whole group thing. There were like six people at a table uh, picking out the music and it was like a lot of just voices like saying things. Wait, you and sit like at a conference table when you're deciding <laughs> your, your floor routine? <laughs> we knew that, uh, so Ariana Berlin, who was, who's an alum, uh -huh. she mixed all the music together. So we met with her and then it was like our media lady, Liza, um, director of operations, my old floor coach, my current floor coach, me, Miss Val, and then the director of operations. <laughs> so oh my like gosh. All of us at one table, like coming up with things to say. This is a serious thing. It's not <laughs> like you just, oh, here's a song, make a routine. There is a group. Um, yeah, that was a whole process. And it was like kind of late in the game. Like everyone got their routines in October. Season starts in January. And it's like probably the end of November, December. And so we don't have a lot of time and we're trying to figure it out still. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, yeah, that took a while. It was like probably we were at the table for like two, Two, two or three hours and then it took a couple days to like perfect everything and make sure everything was good before we could start choreography. Er. Whoa, wait, what do you mean perfect everything? Like in the song? Yeah, kind of perfect the mixing because Miss Val would get it back and she's like, oh, it's choppy here. I don't like this transition. And wow. so, yeah, finding how everything would piece together because it it is a lot of different pieces mm -hmm. and so it can sound choppy and then we decided that like some of the dancing would have to mix into the choppier parts. So once the music is perfected, how long does it take then to perfect the actual routine? Oh, I was still perfecting it like leading into the the week of the first meet. So like I was changing so around what's everything. The, how many weeks is that in between? It was probably a total of two or three weeks. I didn't have a lot of time. And then we went to winter break. So I was in Seattle and my coach is in LA. And so we were like FaceTiming each other like, okay, she's like, show me this, show me your feet. So I'm like in the, <laughs> I'm upstairs in my house showing her, she's in her kitchen. And I'm like, hey, are these the right feet? She's like, no, right foot, right foot. <laughs> you were practicing your routine in your house in Seattle? Yeah. Oh gosh. And then, and then I'd go into the gym and I'd like set up my phone and I'd record. I'd be like, okay, I'd sing my music. And I'm like, is I'm gonna do this, does this look good? And like walk up and like stop it and send it. Once you started going with your routine, did you realize, okay, this is gonna be something really cool? Honestly, it, w it didn't all click until like the first meet. Cause like, I don't know, I guess it was still like kind of choppy and I was hes hesitant and then this, Second, I got in front of a crowd. It was just like, all right. Oh, this the crowd is it. did it. Yeah, the crowd. Uh -huh. <laughs> on a more serious note, when you have 35 million views on your videos, we all know there are internet trolls. Have you had those? Um, I think that's inevitable. I mm -hmm. think when you're at the top, there's someone always wanting to pull you down. And I haven't, honestly, I feel like this is the least I've ever looked at the comments or anything like that, just because it's like, there's too many. Mm -hmm. And like, I can't, I've 
honestly had so many things going on too that I haven't really had a lot of downtime to like even focus in on that. But like I've had internet trolls since I was like a little kid. Like not <laughs> what could they possibly be saying to you, first of all? Like the only thing that I could possibly say is, wow, that's a sick routine. <laughs> You're all amazing. Uh, they, well, a lot of people say that like the tumbling's not there, which like, it's just people that don't understand gymnastics and like college what gymnastics are they looking is a at? different level. Yeah. And like, um, obviously some body shaming ones. There's some just, I don't know, I guess. They body shame you? Um, I've had body shamers since I was like, probably 14. <laughs> How do you deal with that? I would say it honestly, it took a while to like kind of let it go. And I recently was told like everything's energy. So what we take in, we can allow it to affect us or not. Mm -hmm. And like, we kind of just have to brush it off and kind of understanding that. And also realizing that like, this is my skin, this is my body. Um, I think that bodies are trends at the end of the day, like they're constantly changing. There is no such thing as a perfect body. And my body allows me to do wonderful things with gymnastics. Yes. So I shouldn't ever beat myself up for what other people think about me because that's pointless at the end of the day. No, that's a really smart thing that you said that bodies are trends. You can see right now, there's a certain style of body that is very different than what was preferred apparently a few years ago. Exactly. But your body can absolutely do really cool things. Yeah. So you got to appreciate that. Um, I, I heard that it kind of took you to a dark place for a while, the, the body shaming. Yeah. What, what happened? The way my coaches would kind of put it was not the best way. You could get someone to understand that about their body. So we weren't educated ever on like food and healthy foods and what to eat and what not to. It was more like don't eat you look like an elephant, you look like you swallowed a pig. You You're... had coaches tell you that? Um, yeah, I did. What? And then on top of that, it's like, you know, my mom always wanted the best for me and she's extremely healthy and she loves to be like fit. And so um, she would get on my case a lot. And then even then like internet people too, they're like, oh, too much pizza and like put the, all the emojis and like all stuff like that, it was just insane. And they're like, you're so good, but you don't look like a gymnast. <laughs> and so, um, and that was, yeah. So me and my friends would create like six jokes, sick jokes before we even understood what we were doing with our bodies. So we'd be like 12 years old, like, okay, let's see if who can eat under 500 calories today. And we'd like come into the gym and measure our legs. And if we couldn't get halfway up them and be able to fit our hands around, we'd be like, we can't eat the rest of the day, stuff like that. Oh and like gosh. step on the scale, like six times a day, like before practice, during practice, after practice, and then come in to the second practice and do the same thing over. And then it became this thing where like, if we ate a lot, we would like, it was like joking too, because we didn't understand that it's like actually an eating disorder, but like, see if we could vomit all the stuff that we ate up. And, it, and I would even like go home and I wouldn't eat like most of the day. So at night I would get super hungry. And then if I ate like, what I thought was too much. I'd like go jump rope and like do abs and like exercise until I felt like I was good enough to go to sleep that night. Do you feel like this is something that happens in gymnastics more than we really know? Um, I think it happens more in life everywhere hmm. than, than we know because people don't talk about it. So I would say it's not just an issue of athletes or gymnasts, but everywhere just dealing with like yeah. a body issue. Mm -hmm. How did you come out of that? I would say I wrote a decent amount. You wrote? Yeah. Um, so I'd write about it and then I'd also, I don't know, coming, cause I had probably problems up until a couple years ago. Um, and like coming to college, I realized that I had to take control of my own body and my own feelings and my own like mind mm -hmm. and accept like everything that I had. And you're doing good now? Yeah. I'm doing yeah. great. I mean, to be able to do the things that you're doing out on the floor, you have to be so healthy. So good for you. Thank you.